guys, welcome back. This is Free Amigos and I'm Kiden. And today we are joined by Tiffany, who is going to be our model of this video. So the purpose of this is just to compare the 75mm Leica lenses. So here I have the 75 Summicron uh, SL on my SL2S. And I have the APO, again, 75 Summicron uh, on the M11. And to be special, we also have the 75 1.4 version 3 6-bit coated uh, M glass also ready for action. So we'll be shooting her and we're going to have a look at some of the images and compare and see which one is better or um, more accurately which one we prefer. So stay tuned and let's go. Okay, so shout out to Jason from LSK who is lending us this very special lens. It's the Sumilux uh, 75 uh, version 3 6-bit coated. And uh, my god, the, the barrel is just so smooth and focus. So again, once again, we're going to shoot Tiffany with this crazy lens. Um, wide open 1.4 and then we're going to do F2 again, okay? Let's go. How does it look? Share the camera. So right off the, the bat, I mean, this is such a good lens. <laughs> and, uh, only APO, but you know. You asked me about the Leica profile, the Leica look, and it has to be this one right here. So it's, just, it's, it's heavier than the APO, but so far I like it. So thanks Jason for lending us. And uh, if you're interested in buying this, you know, check out the LSK um, IG in the, in, in the description below. All right. So to spice things up a little, we now have an M9M monochrome. And we're going to test out the 75 1.4 versus the 75 Summicron APO. Yeah, yeah. Now you can ask me why on earth would I do that? It's, it's an APO lens, right? So if you put it on a black and white, you can't see the chromatic array. That's true. I want to see whether I can still get the additional detail in an 18 megapixel sensor when you compare to the 1.4. Yeah. I like how Tiffany is a trained model that you know she knows I'm using a range finder so she stays still. Go <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, yeah. Only a only a like a model, a like a photographer slash model knows how to pose for another like a photographer, right? <laughs> So the good thing about the SL is that it has autofocus. Obviously it's larger than all the M lenses, but you know, I can just point and you can click and look elsewhere and still it will focus on Tiffany here. And I like how, you know, you're able to operate with one hand. Now obviously the whole experience is different, but the autofocus on the SL2S for the 75 is pretty fast. And as a prime, it's all right, it's not too big and you know, such a convenient device to hold and if your model is like Tiffany she's slightly shy at some areas having an autofocus system is so much better 
it's so much versatile. Hi guys, welcome back to the studio and uh, here in the studio we're going to be comparing the 75 Studio Lux to the 75 APO. The photo on the left is the APO F2, shot at F2, whereas the one on the right is the Subi Lux shot at F1.4. So we'll compare the photos, both shot wide open and both shot at F2. Now I understand the photos composition is slightly different, after all it was a live sort of model photo shoot so we I uh, wanted to make it a little bit more dynamic, but uh, we'll pixel peep a little for all those who love to pixel peep and uh, let's compare and see what you guys think. So maybe let's zoom in to Tiffany first. Let's take a look at her face and compare a uh, little bit about the details in the hair. And um, yeah, what do you think, Keenan? Yeah, so I mean, this is the APO 75 Summicron M versus the Summilux M. And, you know, with the APO AS based destination, you expect to see way more detail. So, I mean, just at this view, um, it, the two main messages can come out. So firstly, I can see the small individual strands of hair on the APO. Whereas on the Sumilux, you can't really see it being so pronounced. Mm -hmm. uh, and this may be a good thing or a bad thing up to in terms of what you want out of your picture but if i would deliver them professionally then i probably need to edit the hair of the apo because it looks a bit m messy doesn't it whereas on this do too much because the hair looks uh as softer in in a way that the individual yeah. stick out in your face now uh, mind that i mean this is like we shot at a distance that was slightly um further compared to what probably would uh, people would shoot portrait usually. Uh, yeah, I think uh, because if we really want to sort of dig into the details, um, whereas if you were to shoot, you know, very up height, and I think the differences won't be as uh, pronounced. So this is just more of an exaggeration, uh, uh, showing what the lens are capable of and how they compare uh, to one another. But definitely, you you see more details in in the in the APO. Um, so again, that comes down to personal preference, really. Um, as you know, some portrait photographers. They love their photos being nice and clinically sharp, uh, where some people uh, would prefer a uh, more, you know, uh, softer sort of look. So depending on your personal preferences. Maybe we can also zoom down a little bit further down. When we can look at the camera on the camera strap, just look at the chromatic aberrations as well as the um, sharpness of the lens. I mean, we, even without needing going to the that the M7 camera, the chromatic aberration was pretty obvious in the in the previous um, uh, shot. But uh, right here, if we zoom in at the M7, the word M7 on both cameras, uh, you could have a pretty good understanding of how the, the APO makes a difference for the picture. Oops. There you go. So, I mean, you know, you can see how it's so blurred out in the Sumi locks and but on the APO it's just so much cleaner and the I think the chrom you could see a bit of greenish chromatic aberration on the Sumi locks and green chromatic is slightly difficult to get rid of in my opinion and when you compare it to the purple kind yeah uh, what about the texture on the on the ghost skin of the M's Oh, you definitely see a lot more details. Um, you can actually see the texture uh, in the gold skin, uh, where in the APO, it just becomes the gray color. Um, you can actually see the individual details, even on the battery cover. You actually still see the texture on the uh, battery cap. So that is impressive indeed. So you mean that the, the detail is better on the APO, right? Yeah, much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just you know, blurred out, which uh, um you do expect that in a pre-spherical, pre-APO era lens. 
uh, if we if we track ourselves up the camera strap, I mean the the green chromatic aberration really bugs me because it's really difficult to get uh, get rid of in Lightroom. And you know even when you look at something that's not metallic like the camera strap, the, it still has this green chromatic aberration. So you know that's something that we have to be aware of when we're shooting a vintage lens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not only that the metallic uh, shiny surface that has it, but also, you know, matte fabrics will also display this on the way. Uh, Maybe let's compare like what a lot of our viewers will be interested in, which yeah. is like the bokeh. We can compare the bokeh, uh, how it performs. Okay. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit to the, uh, the ledge at the back and, um, we compare and see how it looks. So mind that this is taking a, um, a, a longer focal distance. So obviously if you were shooting up close, the bokeh would be much more exaggerated. But uh, I think even here on a longer focal length, I think TIFF was what, a good maybe eight meters in front of us. Yep. And um, you can see that the separation that is created from 1.4 and 2 is quite different. I mean, on the left side, on the apple, you can still see the individual drainage. Um, uh, 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 cattle, right, coming from the ledge. You can actually still see the, yeah, the black holes there. You look, if you look at the pavement and the grass, you can actually still sort of discern like what are the layers and you can actually see the individual sort of patches of brick. Uh, whereas on the Subilux, it's a lot more oil painting, I guess. I mean, we use that word a lot, but it's, <laughs> it's a sort of oil painting sort of softness that uh, a lot of like a people love. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it reminds me of what you do if you, if you have like a, a water paint. Yeah. And it the swirls, right? Like the, it, yeah. The water and you smudge over it. And then that's what you get, you know, out of, out of that. The, the black boxes just, you know, kind of disappear. Mm -hmm. But my, the Sumilux is what, like twice the cost of the APO. So you're paying double the, the price in the second hand market for this. So yeah. If you're... And this, it is an older lens. So it's harder to find. Good yeah. copies version, um, yeah. Whereas yeah. compared to the the AP, though, I think because it's a much newer lens, uh, yeah. two thousand. So, um, you you definitely easier to find uh, lens with good copies and better glass that are more well kept. Okay, how so about, maybe, I mean, yeah. Look, how about in terms of like the the handling when when you were shooting the lenses, how did you feel between the APO and the Subila? Oh, well, I I I. I... I actually prefer the APO because it's much smaller. Yeah. It doesn't stick out into the range finder. But I mean, the, the, the Sui Lux is still tolerable. It's, it's not like it's, I, I mean, I, yeah. I have 0 0.95 on them. That is a beast. Yeah. But we tried the 75 Noctilus M and, and that was crazy huge, right? So yeah. compared against those giants, the actually the, the 75 Sui Lux handling wise, it's still okay. For an yeah, I think it's still travel friendly. I think you could still take it on a trip and yeah. you can still put it in your bag and yeah. it won't break your back. So yep. definitely um, a good lens to have around as well. Uh, let's, let's look at the flag pole at the back. I think that's the, the exciting bit. Yeah. And uh, even, okay, without zooming in, right, you could see the green chromatic aberrations again uh, at the Sumila, can't you? Yeah. Uh, it, it, obvious. It, it's just so annoying to me because, you know, when I see green chromatic aberration, it is a nightmare to get rid of. And, and you can see it in the flagpole. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what, to be honest, uh, I never really post, never really get rid of chromatic aberration post because I think overall, uh, it's, I mean, obviously we're pixel peeping, so that, uh, you know, we're, we're exaggerating the details, but. If you were to zoom out and look at it as a whole, like it definitely doesn't bother me, but definitely if you were to compare them up close at more than hundred percent zoom, then you definitely see some green tint. So I guess if you were, uh, if you had to print very big or, um, you know, or yet certain other situations, uh, where you need the absolute clinical sort of perfection, then definitely the APO definitely excels uh, in that. Or if you should black and white, then technically the CA wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you think about it, a lot of these lenses, like, you know, 80s, 90s, I mean, people were shooting black and white film, right? So chromatic aberration was never a problem, right? Because that's, that, that's where APO really comes in, which is uh, a color. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's look at those guys at the on the on the flag there. Uh, this is the power of F one point four versus a cheap Sumacron per se. Oh, <laughs> so I mean you can see how the face is just melted on the Sumila. Yeah. If you go to look at the Chinese characters, uh, the APO, you could still sort of see individual strokes, but on the Sumilux is just much. Yeah. Mm. Okay. How about shall shall we look compare the Sumilux at F two and then compare it to the Sumicon at F two? Okay, so you want to stop down the F one point four to F. Because some people might find the 1.4 like too crazy, right? But you can always shoot at F2. And, um, right, you get the pass. Shoot at F2. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's, let's have a look. Okay, let's look at the hair again. All right, let's do the hair. Okay, well. I think compared to 1.4, you see a little bit more detail in the hair. You can see a little bit, tiny bit of separation and the strands coming up. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm still quite bordering when you compare it to the Sumila. Like, yeah. in terms of hair, I prefer the Sumila because I don't have to do much. Yeah. Uh, let's okay, look at so... the M7 yeah. or C8. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, side by side, it's still, def it's still not close to the APO, I think, in terms of the details and chromatic yeah. operation. Yeah. I mean, you still get the annoying green CA there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Really get... <laughs> but I mean, do, when you stop down slightly, you know, the edge of the M7 is slightly more sharper. Yeah, a bit more defined. And yeah. Um, I don't, but then you expect that, right? Not, not, not big deal there. Okay. Okay. Let's look at poker then. Yeah. Okay. Poker. Here we go. Look at the ledge at the back. Theoretically, now both lenses should feature the same sort of depth of field rendering. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you compare to wide open, you now definitely can see the black squares on the screen. Yeah. Up. And it, it just looks so similar to the APO in that sense. It's still a yeah, it's still a little bit more dreamy it's, in a sense. Cause I think I think it's less well defined. Uh, it's at, less the word, details, like the the contrast, you don't have as much as the APO. Cause APO, you really feel the colors punching, like the the darks, the shadows are are, are even darker. Although both photos are not exactly the same composition. Sumilux just feels a bit more softer, powdery sort of feel if we if we compare it. Yeah. All right. So, and then the flag. There we go. Mm -hmm. Another the flag. flag. Have a look at the flag. Alrighty. Yeah, they look similar. What do you think? Yeah, definitely more. You can see the face. I mean, you compare it when it was shot at 1.4, you could even yeah. discern if it was a, a man yeah. or a woman, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Although, so, to be fair, in these sort of old Chinese operas, it's hard to tell if they're a man or a woman either, but definitely you can see the right. face a little bit more here. Right? Like, you could see it now versus the 1.4 edge, so smudged. So, I mean, yeah. the F of field, they are both very comparable. And you expect that I'd like it both at F2. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so oh. there you that is the EPO seventy five Sumicon M versus the seventy five Sumilux version three M. And uh I think the next part we're gonna compare it to the SL. Okay. Next photo. Alright. <laughs> wow, Stanton, what did you say? Wow. <laughs> All right, so we're now comparing both lenses, uh, 75 APOs, but one is on the M, on the M11, and the other is on the SL. And we know SL2S, sorry, not SL, SL2S, uh, has only 24 megapixels mm -hmm. versus the M11 shot at 60. So, you know, in terms of megapixel-wise, M11 yeah. is more, but, but what do you think? Oh, but definitely sharper image, more micro contrast. And it popped. Yeah. 
it pops. It's more 3D pop. The colors it's richer, richer, right? Yeah. And and this is something that is backed up by the objective MTF. Yeah, if you look yeah. at the MTF charts for the APO yeah. Summicron Lens seventy five, it just is just so much better than the Sumilux. Yeah. And you know, Leica isn't bluffing when they're saying that they have done something um, to their best ability to create the yeah. SL lenses. Yeah. And yeah, oh my god, just look at the detail on the camera. Like, yeah. Like go all the way in. Yeah. It's uh, pretty much perfect. It's like, you know, if you need to crop your photo at 24 megapixels yeah. and uh, you know the SL lenses are so powerful. Yeah. I hope when they make SL free with higher megapixel count, they could utilize the lens a bit more. At 24 megapixel, it's pretty amazing what the lenses can do. Uh, you're looking at the grass. Yeah. yeah. You see, just the like definition of the grass. Yeah. Yeah. Even her shoe, yeah. the contrast. <laughs> Yeah. It, this one feels like it's coming your way, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the SL. Yeah. Right. It's the, the M is softer. Yeah. Again, you know, the price of these two lenses are very similar, but the SL has the autofocus yeah. and the M doesn't. Yeah. And mind you, this is cropped in a bit more even. Yeah. She's a bit smaller in the frame. Yeah. So and it's impressive. interesting though that there's no V netting on the SL. Yeah. What about the M? Do you sort of see it? Uh, I think it's I think if you compare it to the Sumilux, you definitely yeah. get more vignetting. Yeah. I think on the on the Sumicron M it's acceptable or yeah. like pretty much very, not very existent, minor, yeah. But on the SL it's yeah. not there. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at the chromatic aberrations of the flag. Although both are F two, but yeah, it's, it's being backlit at the moment. Yeah. Um, I would say it's, okay. So this is a good one. You can see on the M APO you have green chromatic aberration, yeah. whereas on the SL I can't see it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're going for the best optics Leica has to offer, SL is probably yeah. the way to go. You can't... Oh, yeah, it's autofocus. Autofocus, <laughs> and it's not really that big. Yeah. And, you know, if you're going... If you like those sort of modern-looking perfection, you know, the SL is the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pros and cons. It's up to you which one you prefer, but yeah. it's I think, interesting. I think the conclusion is, like, all three are great lenses. Yeah. Can't go wrong with either one of them. Yeah. Depends what you're looking for in terms of the portrait work you're doing. Yep. Um, personally speaking, I guess you know, vintage glowy for you. Yeah. Um, like you know, you don't you don't you don't need that sort of sharpness and that sort of resolving yeah. power. So, in terms of like the image, what that's pleasing to the eye for me, the, yep. I think the Sumilux is is it's a good one. It's for a good you. one. I think it, it it depends what you, well, like, what is the purpose of the photos? If yeah. if I'm doing it to deliver into professionally to yeah. the clients, or I'm shooting with other brand shooters like Canon, mm -hmm. then I want my photos to you know, have some sort of resemblance to what they have when we combine our portfolio together. Mm -hmm. Having an, a Sumilux, it's softer, and so it stands out in a way that is not coherent. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, things, like, some, like everything else, it's better to have it and not need it yeah. than need it and not have it. Yeah. So I, having details in is a lot of work to Photoshop away, but at least I can do it. Yeah. But if I want to bring out details out of Sumilux, I can't. Right, so I mean, both, you know, the best solution is to get them both. <laughs> then you can rotate it out. Why not both? <laughs> Why not both? Right, but you know, it's up to you. But uh, the the thing that really impressed me is how well the SL lenses yeah. perform, even on a twenty four megapixel sensor. Yeah, I don't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why so many people are, are such big fans of the SL system, right? SL2S yep. and, and the autofocus is just you know, it's not the best in in, in the market, but you know, it's, it's fast and it yeah. works. Yeah, for portraits. So if you're someone who has an SL2S and you want to adapt M lenses, you get great results as well. Exactly. Um, yeah. But if, obviously, if you need to have client work, because then yep. autofocus is definitely a good bonus to have. Yeah. All right. All right. So so M for you, the Sumilux. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anyway. We hope you guys enjoyed that video. Yep. Again, sorry, this is not a very, very um, objective. objective test. Okay, but uh, just our opinions on these and two lenses. Real well, yeah. testing. As a model to go all the way out, we try to shoot it as fast as we can. We change the lens yeah. as fast as we can. Yeah. And the findings is enough for us. So. Yeah. So let us know what you guys think about these yep. three Which lenses. And uh, don't forget to like, leave us a comment or a question and subscribe. Before we go though, what's the go nugget? So you say you're going to tell us which lens you're going to buy in the end. I mean, it has to be the Sumilux, right? Sumilux. <laughs> for version, the purpose... Version? Version? 
version two. Version two. Okay, version two. It's it's even more. It's it's softer than the yeah, yeah, free yeah. But cool. yeah, but I think um, you know for the purpose of the channel, so that we can have com you know comparison photos, I have to get something different, right? <laughs> what you have, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. See you, See you guys soon. Bye bye.